Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I'm very happy to bring you my first look at Kerbal Space Program version 1.0. If you look in the bottom right of the screen, you can see it says Copyright Squad 2011 to 2015. This has been four years coming, and it has been quite a ride, but the game has uh, is reached the point where they're going to release it as a 1.0 version. It will not be the last version by any means. There will be development still, but it is a big step forward. In fact, the change list is by far the biggest that I have seen for this. What are the changes? Well, let's click start game to see the first big step. Yes, Valentina Kerman, the first female Kerbonaut. Uh, there is, of course, many, many other named uh, Kerbonauts that are, of course, all girls. They all have the same skills. In fact, Valentina Kerman has the badass flag, which means she is just as awesome and amazing as Jebediah Kerman. Well, now we're in the space plane hangar, we can take a look at some of these changes, starting with some of the parts that have been changed. This is the Mark I inline cockpit, and Porkjet has been hard at work remodeling many of these items. If we uh, come over to the aerodynamics section, you can see we have new ram intake, which has a big sign telling the air to get itself in there right away. Whereas the new circular intake uh, is rather more polite about the whole air getting in there experience. We have new engine nacelle models, a new um, hull with air intakes. We have a new engine pre-cooler, let's stick that on the back there. See, actually, if you look, it has a whole section in the front. If we come around here, hold on. Now you can see, look at that, it's got a whole jet engine there, which unfortunately becomes invisible as soon as you put that on there. Well, that's far from ideal, but honestly, I really appreciate the stuff that uh, Porkjet has been doing with this. We have new wing sections. We have new giant wings for... Uh, Mark III hull sections. We have fairings, of course, which you can use to build out protective cowlings to cover your spacecraft as they launch into orbit. Um, new nose cones. And yes, new heat shields, which if you apply them in the right place, you can get to take a look at. Yes, the heat shields will be needed because the new aerodynamic model actually models heat. So, uh, oh yeah, one very important thing Air brakes! Air brakes will now be allowed on your aircraft, it will let them stop. And uh, we can actually take a look at the new aerodynamic model. So let's, uh, don't save this, and load an aircraft. And immediately we see, oh yes, they've created some very nice little thumbnails. Whenever an aircraft is saved, or whenever a vehicle is saved, it will create a thumbnail so you can remember what your different aircraft are designed for. So this was the Dream Chaser save. Who cares about that? What I want is my Raven Spear. Let's take the Raven Spear Mark 1. Now, one of the biggest changes in 1.0 is the aerodynamics model, and the best way to show you this is to fly an aircraft at low altitudes. If you remember, if you've used Kerbal Space Program, you will know that it is very hard to get above 200-300 meters per second close to the surface, which is not really like any real aircraft. So this one, well, you see right away that we're immediately taking off and going through the sound barrier. And also, as we blow through the sound barrier, the engine, the basic jet engine, loses a lot of thrust because it becomes starved. The turbo ramjet really kick into gear as the definitive engines at these speeds. The engines now have different thrust ratios at different rate, uh, altitudes, different speeds and everything. There is a, quite a difference between a, a basic jet engine and a turbo jet engine, or indeed the rapier. Also, as we are slicing through the air and reaching one kilometer per second, that's Mach 3 at one kilometer altitude. We are starting to put some real stress on the aircraft and, well, yes, you saw how that happened. We have some serious problems. What happened there? Well, you can see right away, the winglet exploded due to overheating and then we had a structural failure. 
So with the winglets gone, we lost aerodynamic control. The whole thing turned into the airstream and disintegrated due to stress. So we have all the best bits of deadly re-entry and of ferrum aerospace. So one of the other things that Porkjet has been working on is new landing gear. This is now a stock medium landing gear, but there are large landing gear pieces if you really want them. Also, every single interior is now modeled. And I can look around using track IR. Yes, I am moving my head and there is a sensor which is reading my head. So if you happen to be someone that owns track IR, then in theory you can look around. And it also handles translation and things like that, I'm moving my head from side to side. So now that is available. It is available in many of the game modes, which is interesting because you can get access to angles that you never had before. Remember I mentioned those air brakes? There they are stuck on the back here. Let's throttle down and use the brakes. You can see them kicking in. You can also see these flaps here, so you can bind the flaps to deploy. Also, just beware if you have a Kerbal in here, it is dangerous. Of course, there are many changes in rockets as well. Rockets also have to contend with the new aerodynamics model. And also, rockets get this very nice flame trench effect. You just caught the smoke shooting out the sides of the launch pad. That is a real thing. Real ro launch pads will have mechanisms by which the rocket exhaust tends to get transmitted away from the engines because the engines tend to be expensive and you don't want them exploding. So having the rocket thrust going straight back up into the engine is generally something which uh, rocket launch people don't like happening. So that's a nice little graphical effect here. The rockets themselves, of course, now have to follow the new aerodynamics model, which, well, that does mean they move a whole lot faster. As you can see, this one here is already up to like 400 practically meters per second there. This isn't even running at 100% thrust here. I've just built a very, very simple probe example. Now, because I've built a simple probe, it is not very aerodynamic. And that's why we have to have one of these new fairings attached. These fairings are the fairings are procedural parts which means you specify the shape that you require by hand using the mouse to click and drag and essentially create a solid of revolution which will shield their contents from the airstream and moreover make the airflow over the top of your rocket super smooth. But once you have escaped the atmosphere, it's time to lose the fairings and lose the mass. So it just takes a staging operation and off they go into the infinity. Actually, they're not going to infinity because they will be stuck in low carbon orbit. However, since they are non-persistent debris, you don't need to worry about Kessler syndrome. Anyway, some other additions by Porkjet is this uh, service bay which has been added here. This is a 1.25 meter version. There is a 2.5 meter version. And it's essentially a mini cargo bay that you can use on your space probes. This will protect the contents from the rigors of re-entry. So they're going to be very useful for probe landers on worlds like EVE and Duna. You can see I've got some experiments and some solar panels in there that will be safe for re-entry. And so re-entry happens protected by the heat shields which are a new part of the game. A lot of time has been spent to balance the heating code amongst the test team and we think that it's reached uh, just the right level. The heat shields themselves have a resource called ablator. They're just like ablative heat shields, as you can guess, given the name. The idea being is the heat that is being generated by the atmosphere causes the heat shield to evaporate and therefore energy is lost from the system. Without the heat shield, you run the risk of losing chunks of your spacecraft. In particular, parachutes are known to be rather susceptible to re-entry effects. And if you lose the parachute due during re-entry, well, you've probably lost the entire spacecraft. Now, over in career mode, there's a few things worth mentioning. First of all, oh, over at Mission Control, there are a whole host of new contract types. Most interesting, perhaps, is the, the tourist contract, wherein you take extra Kerbals with you on some journey. This crew want to go around the moon and back home. Oh, uh, to the moon and Minmus, actually. 
This is interesting because there's four of them. Some of them want to get an orbit around Cor Corbin. Some want to fly by Minmus. Some want to go to the moon. So you end up having to go to all three. There are also grand tour destinations or contracts where you need to go to multiple destinations and then return. And any very welcome change, those altitude record contracts are now awarded automatically. You don't need to very carefully break the records in the correct order. And you now also get rewards for breaking your speed record and your distance traveled record. The tech tree has been completely changed with lots more nodes. A new arrangement where you start out without any liquid fueled engines now and you only have an RT5 flea solid rocket boost. So the reason is when we first tested the new atmosphere with the classic RT10 solid rocket booster, you would fly up to uh, altitudes which were rather high for a first launch. So the RT-10 got a bit of a nerf and we introduced the RT-5 so that the progression would work sanely. We have new sections on the tree where you can start to look for things like uh, you can start to scan planets for uh, the surface details. Once you have that, you can start to mine stuff into the holding tank and then convert it to things like fuel, oxidizer, and other items. And all the way over here, you have things like large holding tanks and narrowband scanners. Also worthy of note is the radioisotope thermal generator is now right at the end of the tech tree. If you want an alternative way of generating power at night, you now have fuel cells. These take fuel and they give you electricity. The fuel cells have actually been added by Rover Dude as part of his resource system. The idea being, of course, to let you refuel on alien worlds, giving you another reason to go there. And you will be going there soon. The game is set to be released on Monday the 27th. You, uh, and while we are all very excited for these changes, it's now, of course, my duty to warn you that many of your mods will break, your saved games may no longer work. If you want to keep a career mode game working, it's a really good idea to back it all up to another location and then let the new awesomeness of Kerbal Space Program 1.0 into your hard drive and into your gaming life because Kerbal Space Program 1.0 is a huge landmark. It has been a long time coming and it has been an amazing few years. I think I'm really happy whenever I hear people have played this game and actually learned something about the laws of physics or the way spacecraft fly. And I hope that the 1.0 release, finally leaving early access, brings in a whole new crowd of players who have perhaps been waiting for the official release. And if that's you, welcome to the club. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.